impressed by this. If you live in a remote location and you wanted a camera which is standalone, which you didn't have to worry about having a Wi-Fi signal there or anything, this is your solution. Hi there, today we're unboxing an outdoor security camera. So this particular one is from RioLink. Details are in the description below for anyone thinking of purchasing. So the special thing about this camera, it's a battery cad camera, 1080p picture quality, but it has a solar panel that comes as part of this package. Now the solar panel keeps the camera batteries topped up so you can have it working for longer periods. Now what's so special about this camera is the fact that it doesn't use Wi-Fi, it doesn't use Ethernet either, so it doesn't connect directly to your router. It actually takes a SIM card, and that SIM card provides the connectivity to the camera. So you can actually place this camera in remote locations as long as you can get a 3G or a 4G data connection there. It's a very interesting bit of functionality and 3G or 4G connection there. So let's open it up and see what you get in the packaging. Okay, so I've laid out all the items you get in the packaging. So from this point to the left, we've got everything from the camera package and from there to the right, everything from the solar panel package. So I'm gonna initially go through the solar panel package quickly. Get a bag of fixtures, three raw plugs, three screws. You get a template which is used to assist in installing the mount for the solar panel. You get a sticker warning of 24 hour video surveillance. You get a quick start guide, two of these in different languages. You get a CE declaration of Conformity, this is multi-language. Mounting bracket for the solar panel and the length of this from the bottom to the top is 12 centimeters. Build quality feels good and the way it works, you just adjust it here and then that's flexible. And once you tighten it up, it doesn't move. So easy to use and build feels good. Solar panel wise, it comes in at 19.8 centimeters, 13.4 and then 1.2. Build quality feels good, all plasticky, strong plastic. Cable wise, good quality cable on this, and the length of this cable is 3.6 meters. The connector on there is micro USB, and it has a rubber cover on there as well to seal it when it connects to the camera. Mounting point is just there, just a matter of taking the mount and then just screwing it in. And there you go, it's installed now, simple as that. We have a template next for installing the camera mount. We have a CE declaration of conformity, which is multi-language. We have a sticker warning there's 24 hour video surveillance in operation. We have a quick start guide, which is multi-language. You have a piece of paper with the Vodafone SIM card details and a package containing the SIM card. And one thing to note, it says here, V SIM card is not the ordinary SIM card like the one in your smartphone. It's a special card that only works with smart IoT devices such as Reolink Go. If you insert the V SIM into your smartphone, the card will be disabled at once. So keep that in mind. I'm not gonna mess around with this. I'm actually just gonna register this card and then we'll just test it out. You have a bag with fixtures, three raw plugs, three screws, and an Allen key in there. You have a power cable, and the length of this cable is 90 centimeters, and the connection points are USB and micro USB on there. Build quality of the cable feels good. You get a battery, and the capacity on this is 7,800 milliampere's micro USB connection point there, and the connection point for the camera is just over here. You get a mounting bracket and the length of this from here to here is eight centimeters. Good construction on there. And the Allen key is just over here to allow you to adjust it. You get a camouflage skin for the camera. So if you wanted to hide it away in some foliage, like in a tree or something like that, it could hide away quite nicely and not stick out too much. Let's take a look at the camera. So it comes open and you can see there, you've got a SIM card slot and a micro SD card slot there. It doesn't come with a micro SD card. Now the battery slots into the location here. So if you can see there's two grooves there, there's an arrow over here and it just slots in position. I'm not gonna put it in just yet, just because it will start initializing it. I don't wanna do that just yet. Now in terms of the cover, actually just sits in position and then twist it, lock it into place. Got the mounting bracket there. If I take that, it's just a matter of spinning it into position. And there we have it. Coming over here, you've got a USB connection point. That's where you'd plug in the solar panel. Speaker point there. You've got the lens over here, indicator here. 
and a PIR sensor there. Build quality wise feels good, a little bit on the large size, that's more to do with the battery it requires. In terms of dimensions, it's 11 and a half centimeters just over here, seven centimeters in diameter. And to put the skin on, just need to take the mounting bracket off and that can just slip straight on. And that's what it looks like with the skin on there. Let's get the camera set up. So I've got my micro SD card, I'll just slot that in there. SIM card wise, full size SIM, I'll just take out and plug it in just over here. And then the battery, look at the grooves like I've said, and the arrow, and then push that in. Take the lid. Camera is starting up, please wait. Then. If we reveal the cover for the charging point, we can plug in the solar panel and this is what it looks like. Camera with the cable coming out underneath and then you can mount your camera where you wanted and position your solar panel in a place where there's ample sunlight. Let's make a start at setting up this camera. So just to highlight, I've already put in the vSIM SIM and I've installed the app on my mobile, gone through the setup instructions and signed up to a plan. I had to leave it for a little while and it's now set up. Next, if I now come over to my Android phone, we go to the Play Store, the app we're after is RioLink. That's the app, I've already got it installed, so if I now click open, and you can see my existing cameras there. If I now click plus, and what we need to do is scan in the QR code which is on the camera. So it's just available at the top, so let me do that off camera. Now it's asking for a password of the device. I've already had a test of this, hence why it's not asking for a new password. So let me enter in the password I entered in previously off camera. Click login now. And there you go, it's connected to the camera. Now I did have to wait a little while for the camera to start working initially. That's because I had to wait for the vSIM to be registered on the network. It says it's connected, but it takes a little while for it to be fully working. So I must have waited about 20, 30 minutes and then it started working. And the error messages I was seeing on my phone when I tried straight away was error connecting, retry. So I was retrying and it wasn't working. So I just left it for a while, came back and it was working. Now once it's set up, this is what you're presented with. Now just to show the lag time on this and to note it is working off 4G and that's highlighted over here on my phone. So if I now move it, about a two second lag. Yeah, so that's not bad because it's completely wireless, not connected to Wi-Fi, just a data connection on the camera. And my phone's connected on my local Wi-Fi. Now looking at the app itself, if you look here, obviously 4G connectivity there, then you're seeing the transfer speeds on there. And now if I come to the top, you've got settings. If I click on that, you've got storage details there and the model, if I click on there, it's got basic details regarding the device and storage wise you can go in there and format the micro SD card that's there. Coming down below then you've got the battery if I click on there got some stats appearing so obviously I've just connected it now so no stats are reported so far. Coming back PR motion sensor that's on at the moment going in there. PR motion sensor it's on schedule so you're going to set a schedule for when you want the PIR to be active and then coming back from there sensitivity so at the moment it's high and it says here at the top, reduce false alarms. If you have received frequent alarms by waving objects within monitoring zone, please enable this to reduce false alarms. That's good, they've got that, so you're not constantly being bombarded with messages saying there's movement detected. Coming back, coming back again. Below there you see camera recording. With this feature enabled, the camera will record videos to SD card for later playback. So that's enabled. Coming back from there, push notifications, you can turn that on. So if there's any motion detected, you can be notified. Email alerts, so you can set it up to send you emails if motion is detected. Siren, there is a siren on this, and it says the siren will sound when motion is detected. Let's briefly turn that on. Custom alarm sound, if I go in there, you've got default sounds and custom sounds. So if I click on custom sounds, you can record your own custom sound or leave a message if you wanted to as an alarm. Coming back now, back from there. And then we've got share camera, and that provides a QR code for another person to scan in so they can have access to the camera. Looking down below, then you've got advanced, change device password, date and time, record audio, infrared lights, and a restore option. Going back from there, coming down, and then you have delete camera. And that's all the options you have there. Now coming back from here, clicking the item here, you've got trigger sound alarms, and if I now press that, it triggers an alarm. Let's turn that off. Clicking here, 
You've got an option to see multiple cameras at the same time. So if you did have other Rio Link cameras, they can appear on the screen. If I scroll across, you see some other ones I've got. Now going back, looking below, you can see there's a pause button and that'll pause the stream. If I click it again, that's a play and that'll reconnect to the stream and you can see it. Can be slow occasionally only because of data connectivity, depending on where you are. Now if I click here, it allows you to hear what's going on around the camera. Mute that. Snapshot button, you can take a picture. You've got a record button next. If I click on that, you can initiate your own recording. That will be saved locally on your phone. Then you've got stream quality here, set to low at the moment, which is fluent. And we can change it to 1080p if we wanted. Obviously that will use more bandwidth, so keep that in mind. And if I click here on full screen, just to show how the siren come on when there's motion detected, so that's quite cool. Looking below, you've got a talk button, clicking on that. If I click there, click there. test one, two, three. So that's two-way audio on this, so really good functionality. So you are at a distance and you saw something happening, you wanted to talk to the other person, that's possible as well. So good functionality with that. Coming back from there, then you've got playback and you can go back and see any motion detections picked up. If I play that one, there you go, that's when I move the camera and it does a pre-record as well, which is really good. Okay, coming back from there, and that's all the options you have in here. And you saw for yourself, pretty easy to get added in and get up and running. Nice bit of functionality and really impressive the fact that it's completely independent. You can place it anywhere as long as you have a mobile data signal going on. Now I have tried using a normal SIM, so my pay-as-you-go SIM I've got, tried that out, I tried one which is on a contract as well, a Vodafone contract one, I've tried that as well and they didn't work. So this is a specific SIM for these types of smart tech. So keep that in mind, you'll have to sign up to something to get this going. Let's test out the motion alerting speed on this. So if I put my hand out briefly in front of the camera, there you go. And if I now click on that, takes you to the camera. Obviously it's connecting over a data connection. Let's give it a moment. And there you go. And if I go to playback, you can see the event that's happened. It just takes a short clip of the activity. So it works well. Performance wise, it's not too bad. Next, let's measure the sound levels from the siren. So if I go quiet for a moment, Ambient noise levels in the room are about 43 decibels. And if I now hit the button, about 88 decibels from there. So not too bad. So this is how dark it looks at the moment. And let's see what it looks like on the camera. Okay, so you've seen the unboxing and setup of this Reolink Go camera. Very impressed by this. If you live in a remote location and you wanted a camera which is standalone, which you didn't have to worry about having a Wi-Fi signal there or anything, this is your solution. Has the basic functionality most cameras would have, even two-way audio, siren built in as well, 
and you can adjust motion detection on there. So very impressive. If I was going to nitpick and find issues with this, the only thing I could really find was the fact there was no masking option where you can mask out a certain region where motion detection isn't detected. But other than that, a great camera. Picture quality is great on there as well and impressive it just works off a sim card so there you go i hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this details are in the description below thanks for viewing and don't forget to like comment and subscribe